Okay, today we have a 55 inch LG. This is a 55 UH uh, 5530, I believe. And I'm actually going to power it up. There's a little red light. This uses the one button little push switch up underneath. I'm going to hit that. Should start flashing. And all you see is a quick flash. Okay, so now I'm going to proceed to take the back off. Uh, like you seen before, I powered it up. And all you seen was the quick flash of the LG logo and then the picture went back dark again. So we're gonna assume uh, it's an LED problem. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm just gonna verify the model number. Um, this TV was manufactured in 2016. So it's about four years old. And as you can see, it's a 50 for 50 inch, right? UH5530, I think UB. Um, is the uh, suffix UB? Yeah, I saw it somewhere, but anyway, yeah, there it goes on the second line 5530 UB. Okay, and it's always useful when you're ordering uh, specific parts or boards. Okay, so we're just going to proceed to take the back off. We're just going to remove these um, wall mount brackets, okay, which are fairly easy. Phillips screws and then the rest of the screws around the actual back cover okay now that we have our uh, back cover off fairly simple all the screws were the same I believe um, we're gonna actually gonna go to the uh, <coughs> excuse me we're actually going to go to the LED wire that's going to the power board and it's right there and quite naturally, uh, it is labeled. You see there's uh, three red wires and three white wires, okay? Um, here, okay, obviously the red is positive. There is a legend here on the side of it. And so that means that the LED plus, um, LED one, uh, the two on the outside, LED one minus one plus, Two minus two plus three minus three minus three plus are the two wires in the middle. Okay, so you want to check from check it like this. Outside, that's one line. The second one, two lines. Third one, three lines. Okay, and I'm just going to check it in a circle to make sure my current is turned all the way down uh, because sometimes if it's up too high, it will actually light up the strip even though there is a shorted, or I'm sorry, even though there is a leaky LED on the strip. But anyway, I'm gonna start from the outside and work my way in. So, that is reading 60, what was that, 84? 64 volts, okay, on the first line, the second line, Reading 64 volts, okay. Kind of jumping pretty fast there, okay. And the third line, as you can see, it is jumping around. And as you can see, the backlights are jumping back and forth. Um, I can actually see the backlights through the back of the TV, and they are jumping up and down. I mean, flashing on and off. I don't know if you can see that or not. Actually, we're going to disconnect this wire just to make sure there's no interference from the driver circuit on the power supply. Okay, let's try this again. Red on red, two in the middle, and the black on the white one in the middle. And as you can see, looking at my LED checker, that's how you know you have a problem, okay? And one thing I like about this LED checker um, is that you can turn the current down. And now if I were to blast the current all the way up, 
Okay, sometimes it will stay lit, sometimes it won't. But other than that, we know that we have a LED problem for sure. So let's go ahead and take this bad baby apart and get right down to the LEDs so we can find out. There's probably only one that's bad or leaky, uh, hopefully. At least we know there's only one line that's reading different from the other two lines. Uh, so we'll go ahead and see what's going on. Okay, so quite naturally the first thing I want to do, uh, just for safety precautions, is remove this LDVS cable from the main board. Let's go into the TCOM board. Okay, that way when we disconnect the driver boards down here, um, you know, if we go to test fire it up, it won't touch the metal and short anything out. Okay, I cannot say that enough times, right? So actually I'm gonna take this one since it's a little flimsy on the end. It doesn't have a metal clip. Okay, we just remove the whole entire wire. Only goes on one way, as you can see. It's different on both ends, okay? Do yourself a favor. Don't forget to put it back on, right? Okay. Now next thing you want to do is these speakers are going to fall off after we turn the TV on its back to release the bezel. So I'm just going to disconnect these speakers. And let's have they're both the same speaker. So, and then I actually can unplug it. There's a little plug right here. I'm going to plug that. And I'm also going to unplug this other speaker. And quite naturally they have a little, um, <laughs> what do you call it? Hostage strap, right? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna cut that off. Okay. Careful, I have to cut the wires. Okay. And now my speakers are removed. Connect this Wi Fi module right here. Okay, because it looks like the driver boards are underneath, it might get in the way, so I'm just gonna unscrew this here. First of all, what I'm gonna do is actually mark it so I know exactly where it goes. I'm just gonna mark the outside. Just like that, okay. That way I won't forget to put it back on because I'm when I put it back together, I want to see that little mark there and be like, hmm, I wonder what that is. And let me see if I can actually pull that out, okay? We're just testing LED, so we do not need the Wi-Fi module right at this moment. And actually what I want to do is actually put this screw back in so I won't lose it. And I know that uh, that just assures me that something goes there. Put this to the side, okay? Quite naturally, we're going to release our driver boards from our TCOM board with these two connectors. Okay, just clips down, pull it out, clip down, pull it out, put it back together. Okay, and of course, I also have my one button toggle switch, which only goes in one way. Okay, there's actually a little groove right there. So get that out of the way. Okay, because that is connected to the outer, that is attached uh, to the outer bezel. And I'm just gonna pull these back to see what, what we get right here. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna mark this paper also, just so it doesn't shift. I don't put it on backwards or I don't shift it over too far or whatever. There's actually some paper on the bottom. Going that way and that way. And I'm just gonna kinda like, kind of like mark the edges maybe. And that is actually covering the driver boards um, to protect it against, I don't know, um, touching anything else. <laughs> right, okay. Just want to get that off, and I think this paper is actually attached to C. Paper 
zipper is kind of, well, I think it's actually attached to the outer bezel at the bottom with some screws. I can see the screws, so I'm not gonna actually pull it all the way off. Okay, I just kind of pried the paper off. As you can see, I did tear it a little bit. Um, just do something like this and pry it up, being careful not to scratch the circuit boards, or the driver boards. You can use preferably something plastic, um, but it was kind of stubborn. And as you can see, the bottom part of the paper is connected to the outer bezel or one of the bezels with these screws on the bottom. So I'm not going to go any further on that. I just want to get it loose. That way I can see everything. And quite naturally, I think we're ready to take the outer bezel off. Um, but uh, there looks like some tape around here. Um, as you can see, there's some tape holding something. I don't know what. But what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take the screws off first. Let me see if I can get this apart and see what the heck, what the heck is going on here. Right? It's always something, right? Okay. It seems kind of a little difficult there for us, for us to take it off. So what I'm actually going to do is, oh, okay, here we go. All right. So that tape just pulls right off, and quite naturally, it's taped around the whole TV. There's one piece right there. There's one at the top. And quite naturally, there's one on the other side. There's nothing at the bottom. That's because these little plastic things are protecting it right here. So once we pull the screws off on the bottom part of the outer bezel, this and this should come right off. Make sure that you put that back on. I'm, I'm pretty sure this on there for a reason. Okay, to protect the driver boards from something. Okay, actually what I want to do next is flip it over and pull the screws out of the outer bezel using my number one Phillips and then lift the bezel up but what I'm going to do first is I'm loosening these driver boards as you can see this one just pushes in there a little clip on the bottom I'm just going to kind of squeeze the bottom part and it should come right up you might not have to get something thin so that you can squeeze it Making sure that you don't damage, do not touch the driver boards with anything metal, please don't, or the ribbon connectors, there we go, that pops right up, just like that, kind of, kind of squeeze it, be very careful. Also have some tape quite naturally on the driver boards yeah that way when I take the outer bezel off uh, it should just fall down freely and just in case the screen is glued or you know stuck to the outer bezel I don't want to tear the driver boards so um, that's the reason that I'm doing this right pulling all this stuff apart so they can hang freely Okay, I have flipped around, and as you can see, I have it on the edge, so that way my driver boards can hang and they won't get a chance of getting uh, scrunched up. So, and I'm going to take the screws out of the outer bezel.
okay, after I remove the screws all the way around the outer bezel, it seems like it should come right up. So we'll start with the top first. Being careful not to crunch these. Um, these are actually ICs, uh, driver or gate drivers, or I forget what they call. The little tabs here, being careful not to crunch those and destroy those. Otherwise, you're gonna have some problems with the picture. And let's see here if this should come right off. So far, so good. Might have a screw stuck over here, let's see. Nope, piece of tape. Yes, it is a screw. A piece of tape covering the screw. <laughs> they thought they had me. They thought they had me. And look, there's still some tape on here. Okay. <laughs> Insane, right? Insane. Come on. We are now free. Okay, now I'm gonna pull this to the edge. So, oh, looks like we have another bracket right here. Okay, so this should come. We just tilt this. There we go. We'll go around. This will come right up, and this is what has the paper stuck onto it. Okay. Being very careful. Here we go. Voila. Don't forget to put this back on, okay? So I'm gonna put it by my outer bezel so I won't forget. All right, now our rubber board should fold over. Okay, being very careful not to, you know, fold them real tight or crunch them. Just kind of make sure it's got a little play in it and just put a piece of tape across there and that should stick. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna yeah, just have some, I'm gonna use some electrical tape. It's gonna come off pretty easily. And the reason for this is so that you, when you take the screen off, you don't snag these boards on anything right in your path, okay? That should be good. Okay, so got our outer bezel off. Now I'm going to attempt to remove the screen using my suction cups. And a lot of people have been asking me about these suction cups. Um, they're scared to use them. Uh, they sometimes the screen, you know, the suction cup come, comes loose from the screen. These suction cups, I never had a problem with at all. I never had the screen fall off or anything. That's because these are actually suction cups uh, that are used for to pick up glass or to remove dents. Um, I actually got these suction cups from one of the hardware stores. I forget whether it was Menards or Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, it was actually in the section. Uh, the auto body section, I believe. Um, so, yeah, these are much stronger than the ones, the, the yellow ones, that you, the smaller ones you see on eBay and all that. Yeah, just go to the hardware store and get these. I think these were like 12 bucks a piece. So, yeah, just push down slightly, squeeze them, and as you can see, these are not coming up. Now, hopefully the screen comes right up. Excellent. And when you put this down, or let's get something, be careful that you don't lay it that the part with the driver boards are you lay it like lay, lay it like this okay that way you won't scrunch the connectors on the driver boards the fuser screens and me personally I always mark the bottom left corner I put a dot on the screen actually very small okay right in the middle and I also mark the corner of this way and that way so I know which way these go back and these look pretty simple, just like the other ones. Um, let's see if there's a particular side that comes off first. Looks like the bottom and top come off first. Or is this all one piece? It's maybe all one piece, let me see. Might get lucky here. Yeah, it looks like it's all one piece. What do you know? If I can just find my one piece remover tool. Here we go. Right here. And there's some little clips you can see. Can't miss them. Pull that up, pull that up, and you 
want to get some long, strong fingernails. We just use your fingernails once you get started. Go up under each little clip and pull this off. Okay, once that's removed, unclipped, just remove it. Against my screen, so I know that that goes on first before I put my screen on. And I want you to take my diffuser screens. Um, I'm gonna try to keep them all together. And I'm actually going to mark this corner. I got a mark on the screen already. I'm actually going to mark so I know that this goes here. Just make sure that you put the diffuser screens on exactly like you took them off. all together there's a one thin one it's actually two thin ones okay and there is a thick diffuser at the bottom keep them all together in the same order okay okay like I was saying before I got really interrupted this oh I, oh, I made a mistake this one actually has some screws in there that you're going to have to pull up. As you can see, there are some Phillips screws all over this joint, <laughs> right? Okay. And the thing is, I see a lot of guys take those up and leave them off because they figure, well, I'm not putting all those screws back in. But these screws actually help the LED strips um, cool or, or keep cool because they actually they're actually using the chassis as a heat sink for the LED strips, okay? And the way they do that is they're actually pushing it in tight so it's actually touching the strips. But I'm gonna have to take all of these off, unfortunately, to pull up the paper. There's one row on each side which you don't have to take up because there's a hole in the paper around it. Okay, once that's done, proceed to pull up the white paper. And it looks like it's stuck on the edges here, so be careful not to rip it. It's kind of glued here on the very edge on both sides. You run your finger across it. Okay, that comes right up. So now, I want to make sure that I have my LEDs disconnected from my power supply board, okay? Which it is. Don't want any interference with that. Okay, and I'm going to check each strip and mark the bad one. One thing I like about these strips, uh, they do have the actual test points for each LED, which is very nice. Okay, I see the actual test points are in the middle of the strips. Okay, so let's see, that's mark positive, negative, and just want to check each one and make sure that it is not jumping around. Okay, that's 15 volts. Seventeen volts, okay. I'm actually gonna turn my amperage down. There we go. Try that again. Starts at 15, then kind of goes up. Okay, that seems to be okay. I think I want to check each individual strip. I can just leave my pint, my minus there. Plus one down the line. 15, they're all lighting up. 16 volts. Up. 
yeah, that's our bad strip. That's preventing the TV from coming on. I want to double check the other ones. Okay, 16 volts, 8 milliamps. 16 volts, 8 milliamps. And what was our bad strip? Was it right here? Yep, that's it. See, my meter is actually jumping around from 40. Okay, so now we'll just go down the line until we find our bad LED, okay? So I'm gonna go here, first one, 2.5 volts, seems to be okay, eight milliamps. Next one, 2.5 volts, eight milliamps, I'm sorry, Let's see that, okay. Okay, these are two, two or three volt LEDs, whatever. Okay, this one's 2.7, looks like, okay. This one, 2.7, okay. This one, there's our bad LED, right there. Trying to light up. As you can see, my meter's jumping around from 30 volts to 20, 50, okay. Let's check, double check this last, make sure that's okay. That's what it should be, 2.7 volts at about eight milliamps. And this one is not good, okay. That's our bad one, right here. So we'll go ahead and mark that one, pull the strip off, change it. We should be in good shape. Okay, as you can see, I actually put the took the strip off and put the strip up under my microscope. I just got this microscope, so I'm definitely going to check it out and see what the video quality is.
Test the whole strip. Make sure it lights up. Just saw so you can see that. Whole strip lights up. Are 16 volts. That one's a little off center. I may take that off and light it back up. Probably won't be pretty, probably won't be that noticeable. That's just one. Um, the best way to do this is just to go ahead and light, put this trip back in before you put the lens cover back on. Put this trip back in the TV, fire the TV up, and then while the TV is on and the LEDs are lit, then you want to um, put your LED on, then, then that way you know it's centered. Just center it over the light, mm -hmm. the super glue on the, on, the, on the LED cover, and then place it on there, center mask over the light. But I was just showing you this just for, you know, just for training purposes. So, 
Uh, looks like so far we are good to go. We'll go ahead and install this back in the TV and uh, that should do it. Okay, we'll plug in our strip. Put it back on. Put the screw. Now these screws are also actually number two bits. I was using number one, but I guess either one is fine. Probably want to use number two, that way you make sure you don't strip the screws. Okay, I'm gonna turn it up. Make sure I plug my LEDs back into my power supply board. Okay, I'm gonna put in the switch. I'm sorry, I put in the AC plug. Okay, my light's here. As you can see, it's red. I'm gonna hit it. Should start flashing. And voila, bingo, we got action, okay? That's it guys, we're done. The only thing we have to do is just reassemble the TV and that is it. Lights flashing and voila, we are in good shape. And that's our LED. You can probably barely notice a little blue light, but you know, once you put the, the uh, uh, diffuser screens back on there and the actual screen, um, you know, <laughs> right. You have to, have to be really nitpicky to notice something like that and complain about it. Um, so don't get caught up, guys, trying to, you know, make it perfect and all that. If it's, just one LED, if it's just one LED blowing out, don't worry about it. If you get like 5, 6, 10, 20, and you're trying to replace all individual LEDs, yes, you definitely want to turn the TV set on first and then super glue them. LEDs, uh, the LED covers um, um, uh, while the TV is on. Who in the hell is this? Service, can I help you? Hi, um, I have a. Uh... Okay. okay. So put on our paper. There are some grooves that lines up perfectly, hopefully. Put your stand-ups in there first, and everything should fall right into place. Okay, now we must not forget about our screws, okay? We definitely wanna make sure that we put all the screws back in please because if you don't put all these screws back in guess what's going to happen this is going to come back every week trust me been there done that i don't care if you put brand new strips in here right uh yeah because like i said the screw holds the led strips to the back chassis uh, to the chassis, to the metal chassis, using the chassis as a heat sink. Okay, so they keep them from getting overheated and eventually burning out. Okay, now, diffuser screens. You wanna make sure that very bottom one, the one on the bottom, the stiff one, you might wanna center that one first, okay. They're all inside the grooves. Okay, then we'll center these two or three. Sometimes they have any, these, they gotta have anywhere between one to four screens. This one looks like it might have three. Yes, it does. This is three screens here. Okay, just line them up. Uh, they do have grooves on them, so they go into these little planks right here. Okay. Start with the top first. Or if you want, you could do one at a time. Just make sure as long as you know, you know, if it's getting frustrating, as long as you know they are in order exactly like they came out. Don't flip one over, don't put them out of order. Okay, well, looks like they fill right in for me. Okay, gotta make sure they're all in the notches. 
double check it. Make sure everything is even. Okay. So far, all is good. Because it looks pretty even all the way around, but it may not make a difference, but we just want to be safe this sorry, right? Because when we go to put our screen back on, uh, this is on backwards, so it's uneven. Uh, when you put the screen on and put the outer bezel on, the screen is going to crack on you. Make sure that is snapped in. Okay, come on. Let's do this the right way. Just snap that in. Make sure it's all snapped in and even all the way across. Okay, so my diffuser bracket looks like it's in there flush. You can always look down, make sure there's nothing sticking up, please, okay? Now, I'm gonna put my screen on and turn around because you don't wanna put the screen on backwards, right? Okay, my actual driver, my driver boards uh, go on this side, okay? This is where my connector is for my T-Con board. So I'm just gonna turn around, it's much easier. It's gonna be a straight shot. And these the diffuser brackets always have grooves in them. So, you, so that way you don't overlap when you put the screen on, okay? So you definitely want to make sure that you are inside those grooves. Watch those tabs on the end, try not to scrunch them. Okay, looks like that side's good, bottom side's good. This one's overlapping a little bit, so you have to move that one a little, I'll look, adjust that one. And that side is good, okay? Release, release, voila. Goes down there for right now. As a matter of fact, I can actually put those back in those clips, okay, which will be a good idea, right? Okay. All righty. I'm about, to, I'm about to forget something. Quite naturally, of course. Not about that paper. Our bracket, okay? Which goes over the driver boards, okay? So I'm just gonna, there's some tabs right here, some little, and what you have to do is just kinda lay it forward. If I'm doing this right, hold on, let's see here. Try not to crack the screen here. We got it just a little bit too far over. Looks like. Okay, like I said, you want to carefully put this bracket on. And once it's in the little, you'll see like these little tabs right here um, in the metal bracket going to the actual diffuser, uh, plastic diffuser screen bracket right outside of the screen. And I'm just going to try to, don't force it. I do see a clear path for the holes for the screws to come in, so I'm just going to actually just try. It feels like it's sticking out a little bit. It feels like it's sticking out a little bit down at the bottom and toward the middle here. But um, I don't want to crack the screen, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to put on my outer bezel, right, or the frame of the TV, and. in there or not. Okay, got my outer bezel, came on, put my outer bezel on. Okay, that still looks like it's in there pretty good. What I'm gonna do is put my screws in. I wanna start with the bottom, make sure that is even. Make sure everything else is even. Okay, so far all looks good. This one's actually longer than the other ones. Okay, so these obviously go on the end.
There we go. Okay. Now we're in good shape. All these long screws go in the bottom because of that metal plate adding to the thickness. Duh. Okay. There we go. One there. One there. Okay. So we've got our LDVS cable and our speakers and our Wi-Fi module. Remember our Wi-Fi module at the bottom? Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is push this paper up. Okay, I'm gonna connect these driver boards back to the TCOM board. Pretty simple, just push it push the tabs in, make sure it's even, and then push it up. Okay, I'm gonna put back in my little toggle switch. It just slides in one way. Right there. Okay, beautiful. I'm going to put my LDVS cable back in there. And before I put my speakers back in, I'm just going to go ahead and test and put my Wi-Fi. So I go ahead and put that in now. Should be okay. It actually went right there. So we'll push this plug back in there. Make sure that you do not forget this. Because if the customer is using the apps or the internet, make sure it's pushed in. Okay, all the way. If they're using their apps or whatever. Wi-Fi module back in there. Okay. It's flashing already. It's on. And there we go. HDMI. Right there. There we go. Looks good. Okay. So, put my speaker back on. Put the back cover back on. And that should do it, fellas. Oh, got oh, girls. Uh, they, well, I want to fit anybody. This wire is actually longer. So, okay. So, that settles that. Put these back in. Okay. Put these in the right way. Yeah, only going one way. Okay. Take that back down. Try to put all your tape that was taped around any wires. Try your best to put them, put it back together. Because what's going to happen? You don't want a, a wire to go uh, get in the way of a screw in the back cover when you're, you know, drilling the, drilling the back, when you put the screws back in the back cover and putting it back together. Uh, that's happened to me a few times. So that's another reason why they put these, these tape on these wires in certain places, because a lot of times the holes will actually, you know, be close to where the wire is and you don't want the wire, you know, let's just say if you get a, a hole, a screw hole, you don't want the wire down here and all of a sudden you put the screw in there, all of a sudden, you know, the bolt's not working or, you know, something, you know, so, so I'm saying. Okay, I just had to receipt that um, diffuser bracket, diffuser screen bracket. So that's why I always mention double check it. Um, you know, double check everything when you put those brackets back on there, make sure it's all flush and even. Call myself doing it, but obviously I missed it. So, yeah, I definitely want to do that before we crack the screen. Hopefully I did not. I'm gonna put all our screws back in here. And I want to test, fire it up, and we should be good to go. Okay, got it plugged in. Get my red light on down here. Hit it. HDMI 
HDMI 1. Just give me for a second there. And there we go. Okay. No signal detected. Do you want to check your input connections? Okay. Good enough, folks. Got a picture on there. Okay. So that's it. All right, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, make sure that you do subscribe for more videos. And I will see you guys on the next one. Big Dog.